So that goes brings us back to 2002. So we have to rely for interpretation of the map on the text and explanation in the 2002 land use plan. Why there's a six year gap in there, I don't know. I uh, tried to talk with Harry. I know he's on vacation. I called him several times and he was pretty busy. I haven't been able to talk to him because I was trying to understand why there's that six year gap. But nevertheless, that's what we have and that's what we're stuck with. Uh, the next next slide um, it, this is two statements made by the applicant in their letter dated September the 6th. And with, 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 some, with some introduction, they said, the proposed development is a fulfillment of the vision for this site put forward by the Sycamore Township 2008 Southern Sycamore Land Use Plan. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as a 2008 land use plan. There's a land use map. And I, and I assume that that's what they're referring to. And then secondly, in that same letter, the applicant states that our development is perfectly aligned with Sycamore Township's objective to reposition this site as a well-planned mixed-use site. Well, they got the second part of the sentence right. That is what our objective is, but they got the first part wrong because this is, this is our, our objective is mixed use low density. Their objective is mixed use high density. So both of those statements are, are incorrect. Now, again, I think this, is, this has been in several presentations, so maybe you'll read it again, but this is the, the two definitions of mixed use. There's a mixed use transitional, which by, by its name, I understand it, that's supposed to transition from one use to another, from retail to, to residential, perhaps. But the one that's applicable uh, in this case is the mixed use with retail. And again, I, I'll take, take the luxury of reading something. This is typically one and two story structures with scale, massing, intensity, layout, and specifications compatible with site constraints and character of surrounding residential development. I don't really know who wrote that, but it's pretty clear. Uh, I don't think there's any ambiguity in that statement. And I think most people would agree that the proposed uh, development does not um, fit with that. So, uh, my conclusion is, does the capital investment development comply with the 2002-2008 land use plan? No. Um, at least four reasons. The proposed development is not in conformance with the land use plan or the updated land use plan map, as I, as I just recently explained. Um, the applicant's development plan significantly in, in, uh, exceeds character, intensity of use, <coughs> and density, and probably more importantly, uh, gentlemen, is this last statement. There is no evidence on the record that I'm, that I'm aware of that capital's high density departure from the adopted land use plan has been fully vetted or that a thoughtful process with citizen input has been accomplished by the township leadership, administrative or elected, to justify such a dramatic departure from the Kenwood suburban norms. And that, I, in my mind, that's, that's pretty great. That hasn't been done. Now, I'm going to talk about the traffic impact study. Uh, you know, I pretend to know a little bit about traffic, and uh, I spoke at the um, uh, Zoning Commission meeting about it, uh, which ultimately resulted in a denial. Um, but at this point in time, I'm a little confused. Uh, I've got four question marks down there. I have frankly been around a number of years. This has never happened to me before. We're well into this process, and we do not have a traffic impact study that has been reviewed, approved um, for, for this site. There was a traffic impact study dated May the 25th that was prepared by the applicant, and it was reviewed by the Hamlin County Engineer's Office, ODOT, and the township, and comments were provided to the applicant. Um, there were over 40 comments, as a matter of fact. On August the 20th, a second study was, re was revised, 
and, and it was resubmitted to the county, um, presumably with the corrections and updates and revisions made. To date, no co public comments have, have yet been received from the county or ODOT or the township on this. And then here's, here's the puzzler. On Friday, last Friday, on September the 14th, third traffic impact study was submitted. I, had to, I don't have a copy. I was not given a copy of that by uh, the county uh, or Greg, um, who would have normally have sent that to me, I think. Um, I, don't know where, I don't know what's in that yet, and I don't understand the, the um, procedure here that resulted in three impact studies. Whether they're different, radically different or not, I don't know, so I can't comment. What I do know, or I can, what I can reasonably uh, surmise, is that the, the study, whichever one is the, is the one that we end up looking at, will recommend certain roadway improvements directly related to the project. The, op the applicant is obliged to comply with all of the county engineer required improvements. <coughs> After all, the road belongs to the county engineer, not the township. And uh, that's, that's fine. And the applicant usually will fund the cost of those improvements that are directly related to the traffic generated by his project. So I don't know what the improvements are yet, um, but I think this would be the case. And the study will also look at long-range impact of traffic going to the year 4040, and I try to identify and analyze the future traffic conditions in the Kenwood corridor. I believe that this analysis will show the need for substantial and disruptive roadway widening on Kenwood. Now, with all due respect, Mr. Spoon, I think you mean 2040. I'm not sorry, sure, but I'm sorry. checking into 4040. <laughs> 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 I don't want you, but I'm not going to be here. I, I don't think I will either. I don't think I'll see the 2040. Thank you. I'll blame it on that hypus or something. But anyway, thanks. Thanks. Uh, and, it, and in this case, whatever they are, the applicant will not be responsible for these improvements. And again, there might be a little thing, funny things here and there, but generally that's the way it works. The applicant's responsible for the construction of the traffic signal or all the other things, and, and somebody else has to pick up the tab um, for, the, for those improvements that are not related to the site, but are related to other factors and, and regional factors that, that uh, cause the increase in traffic flow. I did, at the, uh, even though I know the traffic impacts, I thought I should say something about traffic because I, I, I was looking at it at the site plan and thinking about what we have here. So I've got a couple of comments about Happiness Way. Uh, Happiness Way is proposed as a cul de sac. And, and, and I think that's a good thing. Um, it was, were we gonna do it that or not? And, and so, so there's some, some good and bad about that, but I think ultimately there's a positive benefit to providing a cul-de-sac on, on Happiness Way. And I was also glad to see that the applicant uh, yesterday agreed that there could, should be a traffic calming study done because the neighborhood becomes a little more isolated as, as a result of the cul-de-sac which is a good thing because you don't have to deal with all the, with all the site generated traffic. But the security of paths and driving paths through the neighborhood will be increased, and there may be some shortcuts of other kinds of traffic as a result. And so I was glad to, see, glad to hear that the applicant would fund and pay for a traffic calming <coughs> study. Uh, that should be done um, in conjunction with, with the uh, project if it moves forward. The, uh, this is a minor thing, but again, it's kind of looking to the future. Uh, presently, the uh, applicant has a crosswalk on, on uh, happiness that allows the people, basically, who work in the hospital and park in the garage to, to cross happiness and, and cross into the hospital or on their way back from work. Um, I'm just answering the question. I think we all know that the hospital is a very, very important player in our township, and I believe that it's going to expand sometime in the, in the near future. Why not either construct a pedestrian overpass to make it safe and weather
weather free or make a provision in the design and this might be one of the innovative things in the design that would that a pedestrian overpass could be constructed easily uh, when, it, when, it, when the time is appropriate. The last comment I have on this slide, um, it's I think pretty critical. I, there's, in my opinion, there's a fatal flaw in the design of the site. And I really didn't discover this or really didn't look at this until, until recently. It's a big project, as we've all said. There's only one signalized intersection that serves this site. There's an additional driveway that has right in and right out. The traffic impact study that I looked at, the first one I looked at, had roughly 13% of the traffic using the right in and right out, and the remainder, 87% of the traffic, using the signalized intersection, which is fine. I don't have any problem with that. Um, but it's a big project, and, and, and any project that I've been involved in or you can even think of, this size and magnitude of square footage, it's almost a million square feet of building, including the parking garage, usually has two main entrances. Um, the, um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go at that. I think that's a serious problem and one that could affect the success of the project. I think we're getting close to the end here. Uh, I, I, I can't walk away from the chair this evening without talking about of the, the nine lanes. That is not my recommendation. Again, the applicant the, uh, in the, just the evening, I believe, implied that I recommended nine lanes on Kenwood Road. That's not that's not correct. That's not the case. The um, applicant's traffic engineer, in in his traffic impact study, the first one, identified the level of service uh, F basically at the intersection of Kenwood and, and Montgomery Road for the year 2040. And that led then to the recommendation in, the re in that report, um, or the expectation that because of the traffic growth, those, those additional lanes will be required or needed at that time. And there was some, some discussion also in the, in the report about how that might be achieved one way you just get out the big bulldozer and clear out the clear out the right of way and build nine lanes. Uh, there's some other innovative uh, or clever kinds of traffic engineering things called um, continuous flow intersections. If any of you have ever been over to Beachmont in Five Mile, there's a continuous flow intersection there. Uh, I don't know if it's working well or not, but in, in other places it has. It did the first time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, my check mark here is that the, I guess the 747 is getting ready to land. Uh, it's still circling, circling the airport. Uh, or, the, or the Queen Mary is ready to dock, but it's still out at sea. And we have to get ready. We have to get the dock ready. We have to get the uh, uh, landing place ready so that we, so we aren't killed by our own success. Clearly, we're not gonna build nine lanes on, on Kenwood Road. And here's why. Um, so orienting, there's uh, the BP station. There's Nordstrom in the upper right-hand corner. <coughs> Jared Jewelers and, and the Saggy family owns, owns the corner in the southwest corner. And the yellow lines are the, would be the widening that would be necessary, the new right-of-way lines, in order to build nine lanes. It would be devastating. It's unimaginable that that would happen. We have a lot of work to do figure out how we're going to handle this because while this is a 20-year forecast we all know it takes a long time to get funding environmental impact statements and to get all the necessary construction and, and planning documents together to, to get things started and there's got to be a better way 